All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to set up a WordPress server on your Synology NAS. This has actually been one of my most requested tutorials and after going through it, I understand why. It's a bit clunky at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty straightforward to set up and use. So a WordPress site is a really easy way to create a website. It's very standard and it allows you to basically add blog posts and things like that with little to no web experience. So for this tutorial, we're going to start by just setting up an HTTP site rather than an HTTPS site. So we're not going to be using SSL encryption, but for a very basic website, that's okay for now. There are ways to install SSL certificates on a Synology NAS, but I'll go into that on another tutorial. All right, so let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do, since it takes a little while, is we're gonna go ahead and install the WordPress app from the Package Center. So go ahead and log into DSM and just go into Package Center and then just type in WordPress and just go ahead and click install. Now it's gonna have you install a lot of things and it's gonna take a little while. So while we're doing that, we're gonna go ahead and make sure you've set up a custom domain name because if you've not, you're only gonna be able to access it locally. So the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna go into control panel and under external access. So Synology has built-in DDNS services for free. So just go ahead and click add. And so just go through and fill this out. It's really straightforward to do. And basically what it does is you can select Synology and it will create your own Synology.me address. That means you can say something like, michaelsblog.synology.me and anytime somebody types in that address online, Synology will automatically forward that traffic to the home IP address here. Then if you don't have a static IP address and your IP address changes, Synology will automatically update the address to your new IP address. This is really important to use because if we start changing IP addresses, people coming to the site will have no idea where to go unless that gets updated. Now, if you already have your own custom domain, just set up DNS forwarding to come to whatever address your Synology is on. So instead, as you can see up here, I've set up a local DNS server that says my IP address is wp.example.com for this example tutorial. That way I can show how these steps all work without, well, exposing my public IP address to all you wonderful people. All right, and so the next thing we're gonna wanna do within control panel is go ahead and set up port forwarding on a router. You can either set this up manually, forwarding ports 80 and 443 from your router to the IP address of your Synology, or if you have a universal plug and play router, you can just go into router configuration and just say, click set up router. It'll go through and detect your router and basically figure out whether or not you can set up port forwarding on there. This is how people from the internet are gonna be able to get to your Synology to see the WordPress site that it's hosting. And so since mine passed, we can just hit next and apply. And now my Synology knows how to open up ports on the router. One thing you should know, Universal Plug and Play has some security issues. So if you're very concerned about that, go ahead and disable it on your router and then manually set up all your port forwarding. So to set up port forwarding on the Synology, all we have to do is click create and we're going to do custom ports. And so the protocol we're using is TCP. And so we're just going to say the local port, port 80, the router port, port 80, and click apply. And so that's going to open up the unencrypted port to the internet. If you are going to be using SSL, also go ahead and open up port 443 but that's gonna come in a later tutorial. And once that's set up, just go ahead and click save. And that's gonna tell the Synology to go ahead and update our router's port forwarding settings. And so we can automatically, without logging into our router, have these ports opened up. And as we can see, the connection was okay, meaning this all worked out. And so now it's all set up. So we can close out this control panel and so as we can see right here, from the installs we started off earlier, 
we now have a bunch of configuration to do. All right, so this first one right here, Maria Database 10, is an app that allows us to use an SQL database really simply on a Synology. So it's gonna want a 10 character password that is ultra strong. So go ahead and come up with one and type that in. One thing to note, this is actually gonna be saved in plain text on the Synology in the WordPress config files. So if somebody has access to your Synology and logs into the web folder, they could see this password. Just one thing to note. And now just click run after installation. All right, and so now that Maria Database 10 has installed, WordPress has started its install wizard. And so it's now asking for the database password from the last step. So go ahead and enter that in here. This is important because this is how our WordPress site is gonna be able to save data in that database. And the next thing we're gonna to need to do is set up a new WordPress user. And I would recommend having this be a completely separate user from anything else. So we're gonna go into control panel and under user, we're just gonna go ahead and create a new one. And we'll call it WordPress underscore user, just so it's easy. And here, Synology is only going to require you to do a six character password. However, you're still going to have to do a 10 plus character password because of WordPress's limitations. So it's gotta be 10 characters, capital, lowercase, number and symbol. So go ahead and enter that in here. And once you've done that, just click next. We need to give it read write permissions to the web folder because this is how it's going to save things. No limit. And then I would highly recommend blocking it from DSM, FTP, all of these services because it's unnecessary for it to use any of them just in case that password gets out somehow. And so now that we've created that user, we're just gonna go add in its password here. And now we just go ahead and click done. All right, and so now everything should be installed. So now just go ahead and hit a new tab and we're going to go to whatever URL you've set up on the external access we did earlier. This is your custom domain name that you're going to be giving to other people to access your site. And then do a slash WordPress. And so now, as you can see here, we've gotten to the WordPress setup menu. Now just go ahead and fill all of these things out. And here, if you don't want traffic through Google and stuff, you can click discourage search engines from indexing the site, but you probably want people to come through your site through Google. And now just go ahead and log in. All right, and as we can see here, we have this WordPress site up and running and we're on the admin dashboard. So now if we go to that address, we're going to see our WordPress site, which means everything has installed properly. You can do a new post and things like that, but I'm gonna leave that for another tutorial because there's hundreds of tutorials on the internet about how to use a WordPress site. But right now, say you want a normal address, just example.com, or in my case, wp.example.com, and you don't want people having to type this slash WordPress every time. Well, quite frankly, the easiest thing to do is just do an HTML redirect. So right now, if we look in our DSM, we look in file station, we can see that there's this web folder and within that web folder, there's a WordPress folder. Basically, every time you go to a web page and you don't add any slashes at the end, all that it's doing is looking for an index.html page in what's called the root folder. And our root folder is the web folder. Then as we can see here, there's this WordPress folder within there. That's why we had to do the slash WordPress to get to our site. But you probably don't want to have to type that slash WordPress every time. And so the easiest way to do this 
is just going to have this index.html page redirect people to the WordPress site. And it's super easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and delete this index.html page real quick. And now on your computer, go ahead and open up a text editor. You're going to need to make sure that it's saved as a plain text format. So on a Mac and text editor, you just go to format and make plain text. And we're just going to type in some really basic HTML code here. So this is just some pretty simple HTML code right here. Basically this first part right here is saying we're going to do an HTML refresh with a zero second delay. And we're going to redirect to this web page right here. And notice how we've got this slash WordPress. That means when they go to wordpress.example.com, they're going to get redirected to wordpress.example.com slash WordPress, meaning you don't have to do any funky settings or anything like that. And so now just go ahead and save it. I'll just go ahead and save it to my desktop. And we're going to call it index.html. And that's really important to save it as. And so here's my index.html file. And so now all we're going to do is upload it and put it in that web.root folder. So we're going to need to put it right here. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to do a upload and go to it. And so now we've got this index.html in our web pages root folder. And so now all we have to do is go and test it and see what happens. And as we can see here, we've successfully been redirected to the WordPress site. And so that means all of our users who are joining the site are going to be able to go to wp.example.com and it will automatically work for them. All right, so there you have it. You now have a WordPress site up and running, albeit a very simple one, but the customization is infinite with WordPress. And it's a really simple template to use. This is great if you don't know HTML and don't want to have to learn all these things to make an actually pretty good looking website. In another tutorial, I'll go over how to set up an SSL certificate for this. So we will not give this not secured web page in the top left corner and we'll be using proper SSL encryption on the site. All right, well, I hope this was helpful. Put any questions you've got in the comments below and any other tutorials you'd like to see me make. And have a good one, bye.